we're asked to list the x values where the function has discontinuity. In this lesson, we'll be using the limit definition of continuity at a point to determine where the piecewise defined function has discontinuity. Looking at our notes below, a function is continuous at x equals a if and only if all three conditions are satisfied. Number one, f of a is defined. Number two, the limit of f of x as x approaches a exists. And number three, the limit of f of x as x approaches a equals f of a. So looking at the piecewise defined function, we first need to recognize that f of x equals four x plus three is continuous if x is less than or equal to zero. f of x equals negative three e to the x plus six is continuous if x is greater than zero and less than or equal to two. And f of x equals natural log of the quantity x plus one is continuous if x is greater than two. And therefore, if we do have discontinuity, it would have to occur at x equals zero or x equals two. So now we'll use the definition of continuity at a point below to test to see if the function is continuous at x equals zero and x equals two. So beginning at x equals zero, number one, we need to check to make sure f of zero is defined. X equals zero is in the interval where x is less than or equal to zero, and therefore to find the function value, we use the function rule f of x equals four x plus three. f of zero equals four times zero plus three, which is equal to three. f of zero is defined. Number two, we need to determine the limit of f of x as x approaches zero. To do this, we'll consider the one-sided limits and see if they're equal. So we'll consider the limit of f of x as x approaches zero from the left, and we'll consider the limit of f of x as x approaches zero from the right. So as we approach x equals zero from the left, our values less than zero, we would be using the interval where x is less than or equal to zero. So using the function f of x equals four x plus three, we can determine the one-sided limit from the left by performing direct substitution, which should be four times zero plus three, which is equal to three. Next, we have the limit of f of x as x approaches zero from the right, our values greater than zero. So now we're approaching zero in the interval where x is greater than zero and less than or equal to two. So now we use the function rule f of x equals negative three e to the x plus six to determine the one-sided limit. And again, we can perform direct substitution. We have negative three e to the zero plus six. Well, e to the zero is one, negative three times one plus six is three. Because the one set of limits are equal, we know the limit of f of x as x approaches zero is three. So the second condition is met. And then finally, step three, we need to check to see if the limit of f of x as x approaches zero equals f of zero. Well, from two, we know the limit is equal to three. And from one, we know f of zero is equal to three. All three conditions have been satisfied, which indicates the function is continuous at x equals zero. So now we'll test for continuity at x equals two. So we go through the same process again. f of two is equal to, well, x equals two is in the interval where x is greater than zero and less than or equal to two, and therefore we substitute two for x in the middle function rule, which gives us negative three, e squared plus six. Let's go ahead and get our decimal approximation. To four decimal places, we have approximately negative 16.1672. On to step two, we need to determine the limit of f of x as x approaches two. So again, we'll consider the one-sided limits As we approach x equals two from the left, our value is less than two, we would be in the middle interval where x is greater than zero and less than or equal to two. We can determine the limit by performing direct substitution into the second function rule, which gives us negative three e squared plus six, which we know from above, is approximately negative 16.1672. And now for the limit from the right, as we approach x equals two from values greater than two, we would now be in the interval where x is greater than two, and therefore we use the function rule f of x equals natural log of the quantity x plus one for the limit from the right. 
And again, we can perform direct substitution here. We have natural log of the quantity two plus one, which is natural log three. Well, natural log three is not going to be negative 16.1672. It's approximately 1.0986. So because the one set of limits are not equal, we know the limit of f of x as x approaches two does not exist. Number two is not satisfied, indicating we have discontinuity at x equals two. Let's also verify these results by looking at the graph of f of x. Analyzing the graph, we can see we have discontinuity at x equals two we would classify this as non-removable discontinuity, or more specifically, jump discontinuity. I hope you found this helpful.